gravity. It's the defining principle of physics here on Earth. It affects nearly everything in the universe and is precisely 9.80665 meters per second squared at sea level. It's also how your poop gets from your toilet to the wastewater treatment plant. Sewer systems are wonders of modern infrastructure. Back in the olden days, cities had open sewers where waste flowed through open canals on the streets. Today, we're much more civilized. We transport our waste underground in large pipes. Sewer systems are essential to modern plumbing. Every time you flush a toilet, use a sink, or take a shower, you create liquid waste of varying chemical makeups that has to be transported and treated. You could just flush it into a septic tank, but these tanks require maintenance and come with a host of other issues when integrated en masse for modern cities. We have to manage our waste because it stinks, it contains deadly bacteria, and it has dangerous chemicals that could affect the environment. You probably know that wastewater gets treated at a wastewater treatment plant, but let's take a look how it gets there. Sewer systems. Urban wastewater systems are needed in densely populated areas so you don't have to deal with your neighbor's sh waste. In ideal environments, sewer systems are completely gravity fed, meaning that the pipes slope downward from the source, your toilet, to the wastewater treatment plant. This is done because wastewater has a lot of solids in it, making it harder to pump. Wastewater also has a lot of bacteria and chemicals, and when we push it through turbulent environments like pumps, it can create dangerous dangerous and deadly gases like hydrogen sulfide. In an ideal sewer system, pipes from each house or building flow into a sewer main that usually runs alongside a road or underneath one. The sewer main in a large area is usually 3 to 5 feet in diameter, with pipes from each house being about 6 to 12 inches in diameter on average. In every sewer main, there are periodical vertical pipes that meet the ground with manholes. These access points are spaced depending upon the local code and needed just in case a problem arises in the sewer main. Say your toddler has a nasty habit of flushing toys. If they do this enough and the toys make it into the main, there might eventually be a major clog that city workers need to remove. Sewer mains will flow into progressively larger and larger pipes as they accumulate more and more sewage, until eventually they reach a wastewater treatment plant. Usually, these plants are in low-lying areas to make engineers' jobs of designing sewer systems much easier. However, all of this gravity-fed sewer system talk is the ideal scenario. What happens when your house is below the elevation of the wastewater treatment plant, or if the sewage needs to travel over a hill? You need to pressurize the poop. This is done using grinder pumps or lift stations to pump the sewage up over hills. These stations collect sewage from lower elevations and utilize pumps to push it up to the needed height where it can gravity flow from there on out. These pumps are specifically designed to handle the high amount of solids seen in waste like toilet paper and flushable wipes. These pumping locations are usually in places of relatively low elevation due to their nature and will likely have a small building to house the equipment. They're also usually placed far away from human populations as they have a nasty habit of exploding, or at the very least producing dangerous levels of hydrogen sulfide due to the turbulent sewage. Sewer systems at their core are a bunch of sloped piped drains that take your waste from your house to a treatment plant. Occasionally there are pumps, but for the most part, gravity does all of the work.